So back now, a ranking of military spending by country shows Russia is no longer in the top five for the first time since 2006. An international think tank says total world military spending rose to $1.8 trillion in 2018. The U.S. tops the list, followed by China, then Saudi Arabia, India, and France. Let's bring in Ian Bremmer. He's president of Eurasia Group. And because you know so much and you can talk very quickly, we're going to get through as many topics as we can. I did want to ask you first about Russia. It's like they punch above their weight. Right. They, they, they get all of this press attention, but they're actually not doing that well economically and now falling behind militarily, too. Yeah. I mean, their economy is uh, really challenged right now. It's smaller than Canada's economy, smaller than Italy's economy. It's Russia, right? Massive it's Russia. It's smaller than Italy's economy. Yeah, I but didn't know that. they are the second largest in arms sales in the world to the United States. So they punch above their weight in selling arms to all the countries that otherwise couldn't get arms we buy from the U.S. Arms or the Europeans. No, all these crappy little buying, countries are, are buying, buying from, him. from the Russians, and they're more than willing, right? So the fact is that mm. if you're looking at who's causing trouble around the world, especially who's trying to undermine the Americans, the Russians are doing more in those places, the Venezuelas, the Syrias, et cetera, mm. et cetera. Well, and also they're continuing to do, th like, you, it doesn't take a lot of people for them to help try to interfere in our election. I think that we've saw, it wasn't all that many people, but they were able to do a lot of stuff in here. I mean, the money they spent total on the Facebook ads, $100,000. Right. But they're very risk acceptant. So their mm -hmm. willingness to throw out asymmetric disinformation, espionage mm -hmm. against our elections, mm -hmm. the British referendum, they're actually supporting the National Front in France as well as the yellow vest there. That's the Russian. The pro, Chinese aren't doing that. Are they the pro Brexit or against Brexit? Oh, they're pro Brexit <laughs> they're pro because Brexit. it weakens the it Europeans. Weakens. It weakens the Europeans. Yeah. What about um, so speaking of Europeans? So um, I was curious about this. We don't follow too much from here the Spanish elections. Yeah. But are there trends that happened in yesterday's uh, election out there in Spain that could help inform us as to what could be happening around the world a geopolitically? Little a little bit. Um, Vox, which is this new right wing anti immigration party, uh, for the first time uh, into the parliament, they've got 24 seats. They got over 10 percent, particularly successful in the south of Spain. Why? That's where all the North African immigrants are coming in. It's possible that they will not be able to form a new government because it's going to be a weak coalition of a whole bunch of parties. Mm -hmm. May need to bring in the secessionists from the Basque country, from Catalonia. But the Spanish economy can work without a functional economy, mm -hmm. uh, you know, without a functional government. And so uh, I don't think that matters that much. Then I also wanted to ask you about uh, John Bolton, who uh, over the weekend was doing a few interviews. He was talking about a part of the world that you were just in, in Latin America. Uh, he said that the Monroe Doctrine is alive and well. It's our hemisphere. That doesn't mean armed force. That's the Roosevelt corollary. I haven't invoked that yet. All options are on the table. Now, Ian, the Roosevelt corollary, for those of us who don't remember our history. Uh, means the willingness and capacity to use military intervention, actual force on the ground to defend mm -hmm. the Monroe Doctrine. This is, this is our backyard. Cuba, the Russians stay out of Cuba. We're prepared to go to nuclear war to keep the Russians out of Cuba. Mm -hmm. By the way, of course, the Russians, the Chinese, also kind of feel like they have their own Monroe, Monroe doctrine. doctrines, right? But Russian, you were Ukraine. just in Brazil yeah. and, of course, neighbors with Venezuela. What, did you hear anything about their concerns there? Well, um, they're very concerned about uh, the fact that uh, there is this very imploding economy and regime, and the, the government in Brazil is very aligned with the Trump administration in wanting to squeeze, Brazil, squeeze Venezuela as hard as humanly possible. Mm -hmm. um, their economy is not doing very, very well. They've just gotten through by far the worst recession that they've experienced um, since Brazil's become a, de a, a, a democracy, mm -hmm. and, and people are angry. The political divide inside that country feels at least as bad, probably worse, than it does in the U.S. I mean, it's dividing workplaces. And I read today families. you said that um, they have a big pension problem. They do. And uh, they know that their debt's too high. They know if they want to get people to go back and invest in Brazil, they have to actually have pension reform. The president's trying to do that. But the headline numbers, that what they're actually going to be able to accomplish and get through Congress is nowhere near what the markets are actually expecting. So I think Brazil's going to be well, you, live a, you lead a fascinating life, and we love it that you travel the world and come and tell us about it. We appreciate it. All right. Yeah. Ian Bremmer, thank you.